But you know what? The damn thing is, you got to be serious about making a picture. Hi, my name's Jack. This is Seen It, and today we're talking about good visual storytelling. There's an incredible sequence as they're coming back over across the border. It all happens in about 90 seconds. And how this guy... We tried to uh, avoid the cliches... Uh, ...made a film better by working with this guy. The hardest scene in the whole film was the shootout at the border post. All right, you ready? Let's go. A character goes through a checkpoint which represents safety, looks back at the danger, turns to camera to give us this concerned look, and then their car stops. Okay, it's a fuck up. In isolation, sure, this might seem a bit boring, but it's a big scene. Basically, it's the inflection point of the story when the main character realizes they're not in control anymore. Fuck! God damn it! If you want a really extreme example of this, look at the films of Martin Scorsese, which often feature a rapid rise to the top. Everybody have a good week! A moment of reckoning, which would be this inflection point. The minute they kill Billy Bats, Frank Vincent, it's downhill. And then a depressing fall from grace. And for the record, in thrillers, this is probably my favourite part of the film, outside of a climactic twist. It introduces stakes, lets the characters evolve, and allows us to start guessing the ending. Who is Kaiser Soze? But a lot of filmmakers don't seem to capitalise on the visual possibilities of this moment, instead letting the script do all the work. Like, here's an example of it done badly. Have I killed you before? <laughs> what? Shot, reverse shot. Now, clearly there are heaps of examples of shot reverse shot being really impactful and interesting, but for the big inflection point when Loki already did this exact scene way better... They all blow together after a while. Forgettable. I did a commercial for American Express. Here, we have the protagonist, but where's the antagonist? Huh? Where's the drama? Where I'm complaining about what I shot at a kid's birthday party. Yeah, that is, that's what I do. My AD saw me last week, he said, I love the commercial. He said, it's like being back at the monitor. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> I've lost the narrative thread. Doesn't make any sense, look at it. There's no life to it at all. This is the issue. Dialogue scenes take you out of a thriller because they're too stagnant. The narrative gets boring. So instead, let's look at some filmmakers who work hard to link what's happening in the scene with what's happening on the screen. Who said that? Like, this is how to use a shot reverse shot properly. A character realizes they have multiple personalities. I don't understand. The evil side the takes evil. over. You killed them. We killed them. So, reveal it through a reflection. It's logically jarring to see someone talking to themselves, but the continuity of the framing and editing means we never get confused. The result? We must get the patience. We must get it back. Patience. Patience, my love. A creepy, entertaining inflection point. <laughs> But what if the solution isn't that simple? Say the character has to cross an imaginary line, learn something monumental. Kate Mesa, she's an FBI agent. She also uh, runs a hostage rescue team. She's really the moral compass of, of the film and she likes to do things in the right way. She does things by the book. He did this by the book, right? Come on, of course. Kate Mesa witnessed slowly that the violence coming from the South is growing and coming closer and closer to her own town. She feels that she has less and less power against that violence. So how do you show this realization visually? As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. First, let's check out Goodfellas. The start of the movie looks like this. The second half looks like this. That's all the money that we had, Karen. I was dependent on that. Why did you do that? Do they feel different? Of course, because Marty emphasizes his inflection point by playing with the lighting, color palette, and the shot lengths either side of it. And there's a bunch of other creative directors who do this well too. Bong Joon-ho uses screen direction and staging, plays around them heaps to emphasize the lateral and vertical progression of his characters. Edgar Wright uses reiterations of the same staging and choreography for a scene, as well as other visual gags. Reports of serious attacks on people who are literally being eaten alive. To foreshadow his plot. And hell, even Michael Bay, who gets a lot of shit in the film community, adds vertical levels to emphasize the importance of big moments. Shit just got real. Which brings us back to this scene. This character, Kate, is trying to get across the bridge from Mexico to America. On one side is danger and confusion, and on the other side is safety and information, because Kate doesn't really know what she's signed up for. You're a fucking spook. And, and him, I mean, who the fuck is that? Therefore, what better way to represent her uncertainty than trapping her right in the middle? Fuck! It's simple, linear, easy to understand, and reveals the truth about her mission. And staying with Kate, and that really brings you into the action through a character's perspective. And then 
we would get to this, you know, to being stuck. When you're stuck, you can't really move around. And impressively, director Denis Villeneuve lays all this storytelling not with a dialogue, but with visuals. So much of it was played from Emily's point of view, and she's sitting in the back of a car. It's really important you build up at the beginning, like who's the bad guy and who's not. And you know, there's all the civilians in between. So first we get the acknowledgement that they're stopping. Cut to reaction shots. They identify threats perpendicular to the car. Red and Paula, two lanes over on my 10. The geography expands laterally. Aerial establishing shot to confirm the triangulation of the three cars. Cut away to a barking dog, which, um... There's always dogs. Anyway, then the camera switches from lockdown to handheld and we pushed in on the action. No, 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 no! And finally, there's a quick fake out as we return to the supposed calm of Kate's static shot before a quick pan leads to this. The border crossing scene is where you see the first time the character starts to truly disintegrate. What the fuck are we doing? This scene with very little dialogue is all in the service of showing Kate's moment of truth. She learns that she can't trust her team, she learns she's in over her head, and she doesn't know what to do about it. I'm not authorized to follow orders from Alejandro. And there's a lot of ways Villeneuve could have shown this. It could have been a more generic wide angle shootout, it could have been a conversation, but presenting it through Kate's POV in a setting as thematically simple as a straight road told us everything we needed to know. And if you think that's great storytelling, so did Denis because he repeats the exact same physical gauntlet at the end of the film. There's an old sequence that is shot in total darkness. But when I say in total darkness, I mean we were shooting in deep dark. Kate needs to answer one final question. And to do this, she has to travel from one end of a tunnel to the other, point A to point B. And just for good measure, cinematographer Roger Deakins and Villeneuve decided to film the whole sequence in pitch black. We were shooting in darkness. Because Kate is in the dark. I need to know what they used us for. And it's only once she gets her answer that she steps into the light. Freeze! It's beautiful, that's good filmmaking. Now clearly not everyone has the budget of Denis Villeneuve or the talent of Roger Deakins, but there's something special about filmmakers who create a synthesis between what's yeah, happening in the scene and what's happening on the screen. Screen. For instance, you've got a dysfunctional family who has to learn to work together. Do this. Come on, come on, Woo! Down with God! Woo! You're showing a foreigner who feels out of place in another country. Do this. You're showing the consequences of excess and gluttony. Do this. This last scene is from a short Denis Villeneuve directed in 2008. It goes for eight minutes, and there are only two words in the entire film. Next door. <laughs> so basically, what I'm saying is there's plenty of creative ways to say things without saying them. Less this. You're not the one with the hammer. It's Thor. More this. What are the rules here? We must be engaged to engage. And I think we'd all be happier. What are the essentials to you? What makes cinema? I think what makes cinema to me, uh, I think ultimately it's something that for some reason stays with you uh, so that a few years later you could watch it again or 10 years later you watch it again and it's different.